Good morning, all CamelbackTrading.org. Coming to you this Friday morning, February 16th. Looking at Window Traders' market profile of the ES and NQ. So a couple of quick things just want to go over. Well, first and foremost, uh, we have, it's an option expiration. You have PPI coming out at 830. But based on um, CPI, I want you to try to be, you know, my main goal in my trading room is to educate people and to use market-generated information for the reasons the market does what it does. Everybody will say the market went down on Tuesday because of the CPI number, okay? To me, the market just got too long. If it was really and truly the CPI number, why are we trading here two days later back above where it was and just off the all-time highs? Unless they revise that number, right? How can you say it was the CPI number? Um, it just makes you a more educated and uh, focused trader to see that the market generated information is moving the market and not these quote unquote events. Okay? Um, when you have mindless machines and uneducated traders, that whips the market all around. But I think it's better to focus on what the market's trying to tell us and that the market makes the news and not the news making the market. All right. So we're looking to possibly gap higher. The gap and go crowd has been destroyed last year and so far this year. You might have gap rules in play this morning. You're going to have balance rules for sure on a daily in uh, play this morning. Balance rules are a thousand more times more important than gap rules. Our all-time high for me is our balance high in the daily. Even though we're one time framing up here, two days, I'm not calling this up yet. It's one big balance for me. Okay, so we need to take out the all-time high to go back to up. Same goes for NQ. So hopefully everybody remembers the balance rules. We'll see if they're going to come into play right off the off the bat on the opening, or do we come back prior to 9:30 into yesterday's range? Remember, we went out with a double distribution day in ES. NQ did not. NQ didn't even fill the gap from CPI day. They left a couple of ticks. Amazing they didn't fill it yesterday. Well, right now they're attempting to blow through it and take back another set of single prints from February 12th that ES does not have. Righty went out with a double distribution day. Held their gap on top of a double distribution day the day before. That's emotional trading, my friends. Back and forth we go. Gaps up, gaps down, single prints all over the place. Um, although single prints have not really held, uh, especially to the downside in the S&P this year. So game plan for this morning. Well, gaps have not held. If, the, if we do gap higher, here's a decent risk reward, uh, short for me, against the overnight high. Now I would take a small one the first time because as of right now, it's still six, seven points away from the all-time high and the balance high. And the reason I take a small one is if they get the overnight high, it doesn't necessarily mean I take that short off yet. I might actually add to it and then see if we play games, not play games, but if the balance rule, we get close to it, but don't get it and then roll back over or slightly stretch it and roll back over. If those two scenarios happen, then whatever I added on should get paid. If the third scenario happens where you go through a balance high and don't look back, well then, obviously, that's a losing trade. So that would be one short I would look at. As far as a long, if we're to get the overnight high and then back off and fill the gap, I'd be looking along the gap fill. Right? I'd rather long the gap fill after getting the overnight high rather than having it fill the gap prior to it because then that opens up the possibility of testing the overnight low. So if they get the overnight high and then fill the gap, I'll long the gap. I would not stay in it down to the overnight low. I'd give it maybe two or three points and then reassess and then maybe long again against the overnight low and value high. And again, I'd be out probably below L&M's low. So those are real early plays um, that you, know, you would be getting in the room as we're trading all morning. <clears throat> um, now, NQ is a little different. They're trying to get into their upper distribution from the 12th. So if they do and fill this, then it will be interesting to say if, see if they stay out of the lower distribution. If they don't, well, then there's a good chance they come back and take back their gap. If they stay above it, well, then again, eventually, 
their all-time high. Right now, it's still pretty high at 121.50. But again, a 100-point move in NQ is not that difficult. And then on the chart, we'll recap all of these charts tonight, top to bottom, monthly through daily. The key number for me in ES is 48. That's last week's high. It's also yesterday's high. So if we close above that, you have an outside week up again. Be very bullish. The SPY is already one time framing up six weeks. I don't think we're taking out last week's low to today in SPY. So the monthly is healthy. The weekly is uh, healthy, would be especially healthy if we take out a close above 48. And the daily, yes, we're one time framing up for two days. But like I said, I'm calling this balance until we either take out the all time high or Tuesday's low to go down. Good luck trading today. Thank you for liking and subscribing to this channel. And we'll recap the day and the week at 4 p.m.